Unit 2, Lesson 1 deals with the creation of ground data. This usually entails the collection of survey data, point data, the generation of surfaces, and the use of images. And this is typically information that an engineer or technician would require prior to beginning the design. So let's discuss Lesson 1, which is the creation of survey data. In this lesson, the first exercise, you're going to review the survey environment, which is all of the components that make up the survey functionality in Civil 3D. In exercise 2, you create a survey database. In exercise 3, you create a survey network in a database. In exercise 4, you create figure styles. In exercise 5, you create figure prefixes. And figures are the base plan line work that are automatically generated when surveyors apply connectivity codes in the field, such as begin, end, continue, and C3. In exercise 6, you import survey data to the drawing and to the survey database. And then in exercise 7, you edit that survey data. So let's begin by reviewing the survey environment. Uh, the survey environment consists of the tool space, a survey tab for manipulating survey data. So you can see here is where you access the survey tab for the tool space window. Here it's displayed in the tool space window, and here's the contents of that survey tab. You review the settings, oh, sorry, the prospector tab for your survey data and then the settings tab for your styles and let's just have a look at that before we move into the next exercise so the survey tab of the tool space window is here and on the home tab of the ribbon palettes panel you can close or open the survey tool space you can also type CST to close survey tool space and OST to open survey tool space. And in here you can see your survey databases, none of which are open right now, your equipment databases, which are useful for equipment parameters that are required for least squares traverse adjustments, your figures prefix database, and also you have what are called line work code sets here. On the settings tab of the tool space, if we scroll down to the survey feature, this is where we have network styles, which control the display of the survey network object, and you also have figure styles, which control the display of the figures of the base plan line work. And on the prospector tab, if you expand survey, you have survey networks and figures and these would be the networks and figures that are residing in the drawing but remember that all of that information resides in the project database uh, the survey project database so the survey database is an external repository for survey data and these are listed on the survey tab and you can see here that you can transform data or move data from a survey database to any different set of drawings and this is very interesting because the survey data base can be at a specific project coordinate system and when you move data from the database you can move it to any drawing via a data transfer and a coordinate transformation occurs so the software will compare the coordinate system assigned to the database against the coordinate system assigned to any one of the drawings and convert the data. So it's a very powerful way to represent data in multiple coordinate systems. So let's have a look at the survey databases. Under the survey tab, here are a number of survey databases. I can right click on a survey database, create a new local survey database. I'll just call this demonstration. And if we click OK, we now have a survey database called Demonstration here. And if we were to look at the location of that data on the hard drive in the C, 
you have civil 3D projects and this is the default location for your survey databases so here it is demonstration so this is where all the survey databases are stored and there's a number of files in here that store your survey data so as you can see it's a repository for information let's click back to the PowerPoint in that survey database you would create a survey network which is a collection of related survey observations so let's have a look at the survey network here in Civil 3D in the demonstration survey database we'll first edit the survey database settings and we can assign a coordinate zone we can assign units so we can leave this at international feet but here are your survey networks and I might choose to create a new network here and call this pre engineering topo and this would be for Ross Street reconstruction and if you click OK this is now the survey network so the survey network is a collection of related observation data and if we go back to the PowerPoint and if we were to just go to the previous page you can see here we have a survey network displayed in the drawing for a pre-engineering topographic survey in exercise 4 you create figure styles and the figure styles are essentially going to control the display of the base plan line work so styles are created on the settings tab of the tool space and here's an existing centerline figure style and under the display tab you can see that we're just displaying the lines we're not displaying any markers and that the display of the line is being driven by a layer C road center and you have a number of different views that you can control the display of the survey figure from but the main thing to understand is that a survey figure contains these components which components do you want to display and how do you want to display them let's go back to the PowerPoint and then in exercise 5 you create a figure prefix database which is essentially an external file that associates a figure name in the field identifies it as or being or not being a break line assigns it to a layer and then assigns a figure style and that's created on the setting on the survey tab you have your figure prefix database so here's one called sample that has nothing in it here's one called JS that has a number of figure prefixes in it and we'll quickly create a few figure prefixes to show you how that works so I'll make a new figure prefix and if we just go back to the PowerPoint we'll use this as a reference so the CL is the name of the figure so that's the name that gets assigned to the actual uh, figure in the field so the name will be CL it is a break line it's not a lot line the layer is going to be C road center not new C road center and the figure style will be existing center line and we'll only do a few of these we'll make another one here and let's just go back to the PowerPoint for reference let's do edge of pavement EP so this will be EP and it will be a break line and the layer is going to be C road E pave and the style will be existing edge of pavement so now we have a few figure prefixes just so you know the figure prefix database if we click on this button here in the survey tool space this is where we can set all the paths and the figure prefix database is located and can be set with this setting right here okay so those are the figure prefixes we'll see this all coming together in a moment 
And we're going to now import the survey data. So if we were to look back in the data files that came with the software or with the curriculum, and I'm just going to go into my folder here to show you the data. And there was a FBK file provided, a DW, an FBK, that's a survey fieldbook file. And this is a text file that contains survey observation data. And the idea is that you need to create this FBK file from your total station raw data file or GPS data file. And it could be a Trimble, it could be a Sakia, it could be a Leica. And there are a number of different software applications out there to create that FBK file. In Civil 3D, you can create the FBK file uh, from within the application using the data collection link program. And then you import this to create the survey network. To access the data collection link program, you can go to the Home tab. And under Create Ground Data, if you expand this, you will see Survey Data Collection Link. We click that. That will launch the link program. And this is where you can convert your raw data file to an Autodesk FBK file format. So we have the FBK file here. You can see it's raw observation data, horizontal angle, vertical angle, slope distance. And you also have connectivity codes that were created and interpreted with the conversion to the FBK. So to go back to the PowerPoint, we're going to import the survey data under my survey network pre-engineering topo that we created. We can right click and import either a field book or point file or even add points from a drawing to the survey database. We're going to import a field book file and we will choose the Ross Street FBK. And if we expand the dialog box here, we have a number of options, but we, we, we will create the network object. We won't insert the figures. And this will be a, an event name, so we can assign a name to this import event that we can always rerun. So if we click OK, you can see now that that data is being imported from the survey fieldbook file. And it just takes a moment to come in. But once you see the data coming in, you will see the survey network in the drawing. And that will be the only object in the drawing. The points and the figures are still in the project database. So here's the survey network. You can see here. Okay, so that's one object. That's the survey network object. In Prospector, here's your network. And if we were to have a look at that style, edit the survey network style, under the display tab, we can display all the components of that survey network. So there's the survey network. One object just displays the extent of your survey data. If I go back to the survey tab now, there's a number of things you can do. We have the control points. These can be edited and adjusted. And making edits and adjustments to the elevations will result in updates to the survey data. So if you miscued the elevation for your control points, you can always change them here. If you set up on 5,000, 5,000, 100, you can change them here, and all the subsequent observations will be updated. Here's a direction definition that could always also change. Here are some station setups. So if I right click and edit those, it will highlight in the drawing the locations of that setup. A bit hard to see because of the style. Let's do this. Let's modify this network style and turn off the side shot and the direction lines. And we'll try that again. No, it's not displaying. We'll try it one more time here. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong one. Edit observations is what we need to be hitting. There we go. So now it's showing you the observations from that particular setup. And here you can change things like uh, target heights. 
So that's an often times you're editing your target height because you may have adjusted it to shoot over top of a car and then you forgot to reset it. Well now we can change these and all the subsequent observations would be updated. So what I usually do is what a good practice is to keep the survey network in the drawing for editing and once you're happy with the way that is you could then remove the survey network from the drawing by right clicking and you can always insert it back into the drawing again or once again removing from the drawing and then when you're done you can go to the points and you can insert the points to the drawing from the survey database those are all our survey points and we can also insert all of the figures to the drawing from the survey database and you'll notice that the edge of pavement and the center line have been layered based on the figure prefix database. So you can see there's the layer that it's on and there's the information. So that concludes the discussion on the first lesson in Unit 2.